look at how beautiful this revelation is. And it came to the most beautiful human being. And nobody knows this man's beauty better than you. And you're, do you're saying this about him? When Najmi idha hawa ma dhanna sahibukum wa ma rawa Behina TV doesn't just teach you about the Quran. You can also learn Arabic from a brilliant teacher. Ustad Naman Ali Khan has made this beautiful ancient language easy to understand. So you're not only improving your language skills, but your understanding of the Quran too. Tap now to check out Behina TV. Now we're going to talk about the second ayah. Very beautiful, uh, very heavy ayah of the, of the surah. Ma dalla sahibukum wa ma gawa. Your companion, your companion, is not lost and he's not deviated. Who is it talking about? I was talking about the Prophet. There's so many things to dissect here. Three words lost, companion, and deviated. We're going to dig deep into words in this series. And I, this will help you with the rest of your Quran study also because these words come everywhere, right? So I want you to learn something about Quran vocabulary today. Okay? Something you need, all of you need to know. Arabic is not like other languages. Arabic, a word, has a meaning, and then it has something called secondary meanings. Okay? You know how you have like the main dish, you have the burger, but it also has the ketchup and the mustard and the mayonnaise? Well, every meal comes with some ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise, and that's all part of the overall flavor, isn't it? So what happens is words in Arabic have a meaning, like dalla means to be lost but it has some secondary meanings and you have to keep those in mind to really get an idea of what the word means. So there's primary meanings and secondary meanings, okay? For, for pretty much every word in Arabic, there's, it's like that, primary meanings and secondary meanings. Now, when you read an English translation of the Quran, what are they giving you? The primary meaning. What are they not giving you? The secondary meaning. And sometimes you have two different words that have the same primary meaning. But they have very different what? Secondary meanings. But when you're reading the English translation, you can't tell them apart because they only gave you what? The primary meaning. Which is why studying vocabulary carefully in the Quran is very helpful. Because Allah uses very precise words. So we're looking at the word balla to be lost. And we're going to look for the secondary meanings. The box, the white box means what? Who's this for? It's for me. But I'll give you something at the end. Now, Balla Shay'u Khafiya wa Ghaba. Balla means for something to hide and disappear. Forget about lost for now. One of its meanings is something gets, hit, gets hidden and something that disappears. Balla al ma'u fil laban. When the water gets mixed with the milk and you can't tell that water was ever there, it looks like pure milk. That's the dal of the water because it got lost and hidden and mixed in. Adlaltul mayta dafantuhu. When you bury the body, bury the animal or bury the person, and now you can't tell that there was even a grave here, then you've done idlal of it because you can't tell the dirt from the person underneath it. So ghayyabtahu, you made it disappear. Similarly, they would say water, you know, sometimes there's a rock, but underneath it, there's water, right? But you don't even know there's water underneath because it's covered by the rock. They would call that kind of water balal. They would call it that because it's hidden. It's disappeared. It's not seeing the eye. Similarly, if they saw rocks in a valley that nobody's ever seen, I'm sure there are rocks in that valley. Those rocks would be called baladil. So the word has a lot to do with being hidden, disappearing, mixed in. These are some of the secondary meanings inside this word. Uh, if you If you couldn't, you were going to my house and you couldn't find it. Google lied to you. And you went, you're, you're, you're at a McDonald's or something. You're like, you live at a McDonald's? No, no, I don't live there. Oh, I'm Bal. I was meant to be at A, I ended up at B. That, that's actually Balal also. You ended up at the wrong location. By whose mistake? Your own. When you end up at the wrong mistake, uh, uh, location, on your own. Finally, Dalla shay yadillu dalalan ay da'a wa halaka. Dalla also means for something to go to waste. Something to go to waste or something to die or someone to die. Like, uh, Alam yaj'al kaydahum 
You know it? And let me ajal kaidahum fi tadlil from the same word. He put it to waste. He wasted it. So being lost, disappearing, and being wasted, and dying out. And finally, uh, a person who's gullible, you can easily mislead them. That person is called Ban. Anyway, here's what I want you to know about the word lost. The white is the primary meaning. The yellows are the secondary meaning. Okay, that's, that's going to be my format. The white is the primary, the yellow are the secondary. So when two things appear as one, like the milk and the water appear as one, or the dirt and the dead body appear as one. Remember those examples? So when two things become one, and they appear as one, when something's wasted or destroyed, and when someone's gullible. These are the meanings of dalla. So what does it mean for the Prophet Wasallam? Allah is saying, your Prophet is not confusing truth with falsehood, presenting them as one. His, his, his speech and the Qur'an, the speech of Allah, are separated. They're not mixed together because part of the meaning of dalal is what? Two things become one. This is not his speech. This is God's speech. He's not mixing them together. He's not a lost cause. They're like, oh, you were the smartest of us. You were the most honorable. You were the most reliable business person. And this profit business you started, it's so such a tragedy. What a person we lost. What a waste of a talent. Like for another prophet, it was said, we had such high hopes in you, you know? No, he's not lost. You're the ones that are lost. You're the ones that are wasting away, not him. And then the other is, oh, he's as good as dead. He keeps this up and he's going to get what? Killed. Keep this up. One day you'll make us angry enough. We might just kill you. Yeah, no, he's not the one that's going to get killed. He's not the one that's going to get destroyed. Also, he must have come under the influence of somebody. Somebody must have told him to say this and he just fell for it. Somebody convinced him he's a prophet and now he thinks he's a prophet. That would be that he's gullible. All of that is being denied in what words? Ma dalla sahibukum. Ma dalla. Now let's go to the next word. Ghawa. I'll come back to sahib, but I want you to understand ghawa. Ghawa actually really interesting word. I'll, I'll go through this rather quickly. Uh, Ghawi is locusts, the swarm of locusts that come in the desert. Al Basham min al when you have very overwhelming indigestion, that's also called Al Ghawa. Really strong, and like you can't move and your stomach's like going crazy because you have, uh, it's actually lactose intolerance, min al right? So that's what it's referring to strong lactose intolerance. Then anything that covers and hovers over in the dark. And it becomes invisible, overshadowed. So, ma sataraka bi dhalamihi, that's also called aghwa from the same. When people, you know, back in the day, the Arabs used to ambush each other, like they used to hide behind rocks and the guys coming by and they all jumped him, right? So, when they jumped him, they would call that taqawa from the same origin of the word. So, ambushing and running over. Are you noticing a theme for all of these? Locusts hover over. The darkness hovers over. The pain overtakes the person. The people get, or the guy get, gets overtaken by an ambush. You see that? So this word has a lot to do with what? Being overwhelmed. Being overcast. Being overtaken. Fine. Then, ardun mirwat. When uh, 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 somebody gave you the wrong directions and you ended up in the wrong place. But then this word has some really cool meanings. One of, one of my favorite meanings in this. They used to make a hole, a ditch in the ground, and they used to take one of the baby goats and throw it in the hole. Okay? The Arabs made a deep hole, throw the goat in the hole because they have a wolf problem. So now they leave the goat there at night. What's the wolf going to do? Going to jump in the hole, and now they got the wolf. Right? So they trapped the wolf. That trap was actually called an ughwiyah. From the same origin, from the same word. So now we've got the meaning of a trap or an ambush and overwhelmed. And then uh, Ibn Ashur adds, Fasadu ra'i wa ta'alluquhu bil batil. When you have corrupt opinions and you're over, you, your, your thoughts are overrun with false ideas, that's called ghawa. So what do you need? To, oh, you got a lot to write down. You can just take a picture. It's okay. This is going to hurt your fingers. But yes, ghawa means deviated. 
but it has to do with locusts and indigestion and overcasting darkness. All of that you can summarize as just being overcast, you know, and corruption in thought. But now let's get to what is it that, that is, this ayah is saying. Now we, we know two words, ghalla and qawa, being lost and being deviated, but the deviated has to be overwhelmed. He's overrun. You know how they said he's taken over by a jinn? Right? He's possessed. Or his mind is overtaken by insanity. Or someone else is controlling him. He's overtaken by somebody else. All of that is inside Gawa. Or he's just confused on his own. That's inside Lalla. And if he's setting a trap, if he's a poet, and he's just using his poetry to make, make himself famous, or if he's just you know, a magician and he's just using his sorcery, he's setting a trap for us. That's inside Gawa. You see? So both of those kinds of allegations are coming inside these words. So now the, the thing is with Dalla, it's unintended. Like it's as if the Quraysh are saying, poor man, he just lost his marbles. He, lo he lost his sanity, you know. It's, it's such a tragedy. He's gone to waste. And with, with Gawaya, it's like it's deliberate. It's on purpose that he's trying to misguide them. Now Allah is denying both of them. He's not a lost cause and a tragedy, and he doesn't have a secret hidden agenda to misguide you. However, many of, basically the entire population of Mecca at the time, except for those who believed, were either Balla or Gawa. Either they were lost and confused, or they had an agenda to oppose Islam. It's not he who's got Dalal and Gawaya, it's you who has it. Ma Dalla sahibukum wa ma Gawa. But then, this is where things get really powerful. Isn't the imagery of the star falling beautiful? The star coming down and revelation coming, and the stars correlating with, with, with you know, uh, the, the Quran and the speech of Allah, those correlations, it's very beautiful. Ayah number one is very beautiful. And ayah number two talks about something very ugly. Your, your, your companion is not lost, he's not deviated, he's not crooked, he doesn't have evil intentions against you. All this ugly stuff, right after something beautiful. So there's a, there's a strange contrast happening between beauty and ugliness here. Why is that there? This is the last thing I'll share with you now for, for uh, this session, and I'll give you a break. The word sahib in Arabic, ashaba, actually has to do with uh, moss. You know what moss is and like um, algae and moss and, you know, fungus and stuff like that. It gets, it becomes part of the wall. From it, they gave, developed the idea. Or also, uh, sahab uh, or mushib actually has, is the hair on your skin. Now, what does moss and the hair on your skin have in common? They're stuck to you. They're a part of you. They're not, they're not quite you, but they are you also. You understand? So it's separate from you, but inseparable in some ways. A sahib is someone who is very close to you. You guys know, many of you know each other, but you know each other from work. You know each other from the masjid, but you don't know your personal lives. You don't know your fears, your, your, the things you like, your dark side, your light side, your humorous side. You don't know everything. You know a glimpse of another person. Some people are married to each other and they don't know each other. Some people have children and they don't know their kids. You understand that? The idea of a sahib is someone so close to you, you know their ins and outs. You know everything about them. You know what they're like. The thing is, celebrities, right? They're, they look a certain way on the screen. They look a certain way when they're performing, whether they're athletes or politicians or intellectuals or actors or whatever, right? They're a certain way. And people see them and they're like, ah, can I take a picture? I love you. You're the best. You're amazing. You know, all of that. But you know who hates them? Their neighbor. You know who hates them? Their driver. You know who hates them? Their spouse. Their, their kids. Their siblings. Their family. Their cousins. The people close to them, they hate them. Their coworkers, fellow actors, they hate them. Why? Because they know a side of them that other people don't know. You understand? So public figures, they have this like 
what you know about them. You know some things about me. You don't know the inside. You don't know the private life. You don't know my, you don't know my emotions, my fears, my anxieties, my weaknesses. My sh- you don't know any of that because you're not my what? Sahib. You're not my sahib. Now, when Allah calls Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sahibukum, He says to Quraysh, your sahib, a person who has lived with you, who has laughed with you, who has cried with you, who has worked with you, who has had family with you, he's married among you, he has connection, he's done business with you, he was raised among you, you've seen his youth, you've seen his childhood, you've seen his adulthood, you've seen every part of his life. How are you going to do him dirty like that? Like sahibukum. He didn't say here, ma dalla Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used the closeness to the Quraysh and said, Look at how beautiful this revelation is. And it came to the most beautiful human being. And nobody knows this man's beauty better than you. And you're, do- you're saying this about him? How are you saying this about him? How can you make either of these claims? You knew more than anyone. He's the smartest person among you. The wisest among you. The most reliable among you. You don't know. If you had a secret and you needed to get advice from someone, you wouldn't think of anyone else but him. If you had a problem and you wanted somebody to solve it, you would go to him. If you had something you couldn't trust anybody with, you would trust him. And you're going to say about him, Balla Gawa? Come on. Ma Balla Sahibukum wa ma Gawa. It's such a powerful statement. It's actually, it's an ugly claim. But Allah is actually, within that ugliness, He's highlighting something beautiful. That your ugly claim falls apart. Forget even whether you believe in the revelation or not, the star or not. The fact that He's your sahib and you know better is the ultimate proof. That itself is the ultimate proof. SubhanAllah. مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى This is where we're going to take our first break. I'm going to give you guys five to seven minutes. And I'm going to start talking to myself again. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Quran in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Quran in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayan is to make deeper study of the Quran accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the Deeper Look of the Quran, for this surah and many other surahs on BayanaTV.com under the Deeper Look section.